Round three in the championship is done and dusted. Here is what went down. Blackburn two, West Brom one. Blackburn have done it again. The perfect start for Jean Dahl Thomason. Three wins from three. Rovers the only team in the division with a lovely nine-point tally. West Brom looked like they might be the stiffest test yet for Rovers, but Blackburn scored just before and just after half-time. Ben Brereton, Diaz, is back in the groove now, two in two, combining with Gallagher, steps inside, bends that one in, left-footed into the corner. The two switch rolls for the second with Gallagher doing the finishing, Diaz doing the assisting, Dan Garner got one back with over half an hour to play for West Brom, but Blackburn held out for the win. Take about Jean Dahl Thomason. Perfect start, and they only conceded their first goal in game three today. West Brom showed so much promise against Watford on TV last Mondays, but the Baggies need wins, and they don't have any yet. Hull 2, Norwich 1. Surprise, surprise, at the bottom of the championship table, Norwich find themselves there after another frustrating afternoon on the road. They go under at Hull City. Two goals from Estupinian. Not entirely sure why a player of Max Aaron's quality and now experience, frankly, would go across his own box with this clearance. Big ricochet falls to Estupinian. Bit of a comical one and he fires home. Pinball for the second one as well from a set piece for Esther Pinion in the second half. Majestic free kick, you have to say, by Nunez, the Chilean for Norwich. But to no avail, a mere consolation goal there. Fantastic work by Hull. They were top of the table at close of play on Saturday. Norwich, possession, yeah. Shots, yeah. High XG, yeah. Wins, no. And unless that last fact changes, Dean Smith is going to be in all manner of trouble. Watford won Burnley nil. I was there on Friday, so no need to say anything here. You can catch up with my vlog from the game. Click here, but you'd better make sure you come back and watch the rest of this review show. Millwall 3, Coventry 2. Big comeback from Millwall, who were 2-0 down at home to Coventry, but kept up their 100% home record with a three-goal swing to win this one 3-2 at the Den. McFadden, great desire to power home the opener for Coventry from a set play. Really well worked second as well down the left-hand side, and then Matt Godden finishing things off. Kov, two up in 28 minutes. Bit of a moment to forget for more in goal to let Millwall back into the game. Don't do that with Jake Cooper around. Easy header for the skyscraper centre-half. Then, George Honeyman wide awake on the rebound to equalise in the second half. Gus Hamer, he loves a yellow card. I'll let you decide on this one. This was his second um, with 20 to play and Millwall take advantage. George Saville, nice little slot with the left foot there for the winner. Millwall, perfect at home, two points per game on the board. Coventry, no wins, and this pitch debacle rolls on. Cardiff won, Birmingham nil. So we'd seen Birmingham go top after their Friday night win in round two, but John Eustace's useful start was hit by a first defeat down at Cardiff in the early kickoff on Saturday. The Bluebirds had won their opening home game against Norwich and then lost to Reading, a bit spotty, and that spottiness continues, but Cardiff fans will be very happy on this side of the binary ledger. Cardiff dominant um, in most of the numbers in this one. Birmingham, no shots on target. O'Dowder continues his good start, setting up Philogene for the goal. Couple of penalty shouts, but Cardiff look good value. They are on six points. Birmingham not far behind them on four. Sunderland two, QPR two. Here it comes, everybody. Goalkeeper scoring in the championship alert. Unbelievable ending at the Stadium of Light. Rangers keeper Seni Dieng rises to head home a 92nd minute equaliser. Despite that being the main narrative, still plenty of positivity for Sunderland, who looked very viable and at 2-0 up would have definitely fancied themselves for three points here. 
Ross Stewart, we know he can score loads at League One level, already two at Championship level after his opener. Ellis Sims, he's in blinding form as well. He's won better. He's got three already in these past two games. Made it 2-0 for Sunderland. Dangerous looking front two that, I think we would all agree. But dangerous looking free kick here when you've got Ilias Chair in your ranks. 87th minute though, he makes it 2-1. Sticks that one in the top corner. And then here comes the hero Dieng to head the equaliser and then actually make a very, very decent save at 2-2. Sunderland, undefeated, looking good. Obviously a missed opportunity this one. But hey-ho, keeper won't score against you every week. Mick Beale, four points in the last two. Moving in the right direction, possibly, with QPR. We're halfway there, guys. Look down there. See that thumbs up button. Give that a little click. Support the channel and the video. I thank you. Luton, nil. Preston, one. OK, Dieng's goal, the goalkeeper for QPR, has got all the narrative. But what about the quality of Brad Potts goal for Preston to win this one down at the Kenny? Robbie Brady pings this one in diagonal. And it's a mad horizontal flying volley by Potts on the far post. Slams it past Horvath in the looting goal. What a strike. That goal was enough to win it because... Preston haven't conceded a single goal so far this season. Two nil-nils in the opening two games. And they've added a win in now. So remain undefeated and unsurpassed at the back two. But Luton had 18 shots in this one. Only two on target. Last season's playoff semi-finalists haven't quite got going yet. And remain winless after three. Rotherham four. Reading nil. Wallop. Awful day for Reading, who utterly collapsed in the first half at the New York Stadium. Obviously, we'll give the Millers plenty of credit. They were focused, they were competent, they were at it. And Reading, and their defence particularly, weren't. Richard Wood, um, the long-in-the-tooth, ageing Rotherham centre-back, has scored loads of goals like this through his career. He heads in for 1-0. Great strike from Washington, you have to say, who beats Lumley with sheer power for 2-0. You cannot say... The same about this third shot from Lindsay. Tame strike. Horrible mistake from Lumley in the goal for Reading. And then I don't know if it's in his head. He's on safari for number four. Old Benny slips through and around him and makes it 4-0 before half time. Job done. Lovely start for Rotherham. They missed the Coventry game because of that pitch issue. So a nice two-game, four-point home start for them. Looking very good. Reading, they just cannot collapse like that. Confidence is easily damaged on performances like this one. Middlesbrough 2, Sheffield United 2. Honours even then in the Chris Wilder derby with Borough coming from behind twice. We know Sander Berger is a huge commodity at championship level. He started the season well. Another goal here, making space and driving home early on to give United the lead. And then the Chris Wilder derby gets a very Chris Wilder goal. Isaiah Jones flying into the box and squaring for Akpom to tap in. Blades, though, led again on 68. Horrendous own goal from Giles. Poor fellow, when he looks back at this, he'll realise if he does absolutely nothing, this cross probably goes out for a throw-in. He doesn't do nothing, though. He slices it horribly into his own net. Akpom to the rescue again, though, finishing off Lenihan's nod across to make it 2-2. We said Borough needed a striker. Maybe he was there all along in Akpom. Who knows? Sheffield United, four points so far, but away trips to Borough and Watford already ticked off. Borough, no wins yet. I'm sure they'll come, though. Blackpool, nil. Swansea, one. Oh, a much, much needed win for Swansea. The naysayers and the doubters were out for Russell Martin. Style over substance, possession over wins. They said they got themselves a win, thankfully, for those Swans fans up at Blackpool this round. Bit nervy for said Swans fans, though, as Paul should have taken the lead on 50. Miss Penn from Jerry Yates goes down the middle, saved by Fisher. And it's a late winner for the Swans, breaking away 87 on the clock, Oberfamey finds his way through. Nitsham goes with him, slides it across, and a big, big goal for Swansea. First win and first clean sheet for the Swans. Blackpool back-to-back -back defeats. And no goals scored now since that opening day win over Reading. 
Huddersfield 3, Stoke 1. Uh, you decide. If I'm saying big win for Swansea, maybe an even bigger win for Huddersfield after a really tough start for Danny Schofield with lots of moving parts at Huddersfield, mainly moving out of the club, let's just say. Uh, could have been behind early in this one. Another missed penalty. Lee Nichols saved Lewis Baker's spot kick. Huddersfield, they were set play kings last season. Nakayama heads home to give them the lead before halftime, looking more like their old selves from last season. Baker, who if you look has got an exceedingly good goal scoring record from midfield, made amends for that penalty miss in the second half with the equaliser. But too long in the tooth, experienced strikers for Huddersfield made the difference in the end. First, Danny Ward just lifts that one, clever finish. And then Jordan Rhodes, wide awake and alert to slip through for a tap in to give the Terriers a 3-1 win. Really, really needed that Huddersfield to stop that early season rot. Stoke, one of three sides to have lost both their away matches so far. Wigan won, Bristol City won. I may as well write the script for Bristol City before the game and just copy and paste it, really. Uh, Bristol City play, Vyman scores, the defence lets them down, they don't win. That's what happened again this week up at Wigan. Vyman, an absolute shining light for Bristol City. Where would they be without him? He opens the scoring on six, already three and three for him this season. 32 goal contributions from Vyman last season. What a player he is. That goal, however, was from Bristol City's only shot on target during the game. And Wigan obviously looked good value coming back for a point in the second half for their third straight draw of the season. Will Keane off the mark. We already mentioned about Ross Stewart. And uh, he was tied at the top of the League One goal scorer charts with Will Keane. Both players proving they can score up the level. Both sides yet to win this season, although Wigan will be much the happier considering where they've come from and the fact that they haven't lost the game yet. And that gives us the following league tables. Well done, Blackburn. Nine out of nine. Outstanding start for Jean Dal Thomason. Hull and Watford on seven. Great start. Millwall and Cardiff also winning both their home games for a two points per game. We should also, if that's the case, mention Rotherham, who do also have two points per game, but obviously had that away game at Coventry postponed. Some big surprises in the bottom six. Borough, much fancied, are there. West Brom are a year two parachute team and are there. Luton were in the playoffs last season. They're down there. And Norwich, the bookies' favourites, all the way at the bottom. Get your views in via the comments. You can stay with the channel here for more championship content. Click here for the review shows for the first two rounds. And click here to see all five of my in-person vlogs from championship games already witnessed this season.